In a recent video, we talked about the importance of screening food plots and how when you screen those food plot layers, you start to establish bedding opportunity behind that screening and right adjacent to the food plot that would be in the form of doe family groups. Once you use food to designate and say, this is where these does are gonna bed, I have this screening along the food plot, those does have a safe area to bed, they can't see in, you can't see out, it starts to establish those bedding layers and it's a very important concept. But really, when it comes down to it, every deer habitat improvement on your land should be screened from your access, but not only from hunter access, but from each other. So it doesn't matter if it's your water holes, your mock scrapes, your travel corridors, your bedding areas, they all should be screened. And partly that is to screen from each other. You want to lower those stress levels so that deer don't see each other. For that, you can actually fit more deer in one, por one parcel. I'll give you an example, a 200 acre hardwood parcel where it's just open, mature hardwoods. I've been in a parcel like that in, in lower Michigan and pretty flat ground where I could see just about 95% of every acre in the snow within that hardwood setting. It was flat, one knoll in the middle, and you could see just about everywhere. Imagine how high stress a deer would feel bedding anywhere in there because they can't actually hide not only from hunters but from each other. So you need that separation. Deer choose to separate if they have that and screening is the ultimate way to do that. And fortunately there's a lot of great things you can plant on your land that are short, mid and long range opportunities for you to make sure that everything's green on your property, that you can get in and out of stands without spooking deer and that you can ultimately lower the stress level on your entire property. You look at short term options, Egyptian wheat, that's been kind of a classic screening now. I've been using it and recommended to clients now for 10 to 12 years. It's been around for a while and it makes its way into a lot of the food plot screening products. I like Egyptian wheat because it is not a food source. That is very key. Let's say you're trying to screen your access to a stand location and you're using corn, strips of corn to screen your access. Corn is one of the worst screening options that you can have because it actually brings deer out of the timber, out of the cover, to the corn to feed, and then you're walking right alongside of it, or it brings deer through that screening so they can see you on the other side, and then they can see deer within there too. So it's not really screening much if you use a food product. It could be sunflowers. There's various types of sorghums that are more food related too. And so really, a quality screening involves nothing to do with food, so that's a real key point. But short term, Egyptian wheat is an annual. It can be planted, grows 10 to 13 feet tall. I like to plant it at least 15 to 20 feet wide. A very effective screen, whether you're screening a food plot, maybe you're hunter, hunter access around a border, or maybe even a bedding area that's on the inside of the timber and you're using um, Egyptian wheat, then hinge cuts, and then a bedding area behind it's fully screened and deer can live within that area. And they can actually be confined in a pretty small area. Now, one th short term that I think is a long-term solution too is switchgrass. Switchgrass is something that in two summers, you can get a cave and rock variety up to six, seven feet tall. We plant a lot over the last few years. I have clients that plant a lot of it too. If you're using a screening variety uh, or a screening planting, uh, cave and rock switchgrass, normally for a bedding mix, you might five to six pounds per acre. I like using one single variety, the tallest, strongest variety of switchgrass. Sometimes companies will put lots of different seeds in a bag. They can call it a proprietary blend then. But really all they're doing is using tall and short term or short varieties. Really your goal, it doesn't matter if it's bedding or screening, is use something tall and thick. I like when it's a screening opportunity, you're putting in about eight to 10 pounds per acre instead of five to six pounds per acre. And if it is truly a bedding area, then you're actually planting pure switchgrass to screen the deer within. Again, something thick, something heavy and tall like a cave and rock. And then you're creating open pockets of diversity within that switchgrass that's hitting kind of like an upland mix where you have gray dogwood, maybe some box elder, some aspen, some woody browse coming in, shrubs, that uh, briars, goldenrod ragweed that actually forms a component of food within that switchgrass. But getting back to short term, switchgrass is great because in two years you can have it six, seven feet tall and if that's a sufficient height for you, then that's perfect. So a lot of times, say a road screening, you can get the Egyptian wheat down, some switchgrass down. Switchgrass is something you can manage for decades. Egyptian wheat is an annual. And then you're adding something like this conifer alongside, which is a long-term solution. The conifer, especially in the form of the spruce, will take 10 to 15 years to actually fully fill in with the branches down to the ground. And, and that's something that's permanent. That can be maintained for 100 years or more. So you have the short-term Egyptian wheat, 
midterm and short term switchgrass, and then finally the the uh, the conifer in the form of spruce. Now a great complement to the spruce, if you're looking at some doing something short term, and something more midterm is a pine, a quick growing pine. Now around here in southwest Wisconsin, up into Michigan, Minnesota, red pine is a great quick growing pine to complement a slower growing, more permanent solution with the spruce. Because the pine, once it's four to six years old, and you plant that five by five, six by six, staggered road spacing, then that pine can actually grow in four to five years, six years, eight, nine foot tall. And in that way, you can make sure that you have that five, six, seven year window covered completely with that, that uh, pine that'll grow into each other. And then you have the long-term solution of the spruce coming in. So a great way if you have a roadside, Egyptian wheat, pine, spruce, Egyptian wheat, switchgrass, spruce, maybe you only need the switchgrass. But I like offering those layers. A lot of times when you're planting pine, I like two rows of spruce on the outside, two rows of pine on the inside, especially facing the sun. Pine will grow up, offer that short-term, mid-term solution, drop its lower branches, and then you're left with the spruce. I want to really point out something. This is, uh, this is going up into the timber up in this area right here. This is spruce. It's a great screen for the timber and the benches and the points that are up here in the, in the deer bedding. But because these lower limbs were removed right here, that's a big no-no when it comes to screening and even protecting wildlife. This direction right here is west, northwest. So imagine these huge northwest, very cold breezes slamming into this stand of spruce. Not only are the deer exposed to the wind and there's it's lacking now any type of thermal cover within this entire area of spruce. The winds can just whip right through it. But if you were a deer, would you want to bed 10 yards back, 20 yards back, 50 yards back? You can see right out into this open field down below. So it really took out a lot of bedding opportunity, screening opportunity, and therefore wildlife holding cover by taking these lower branches out in this specific stand of spruce right here. So make sure you leave those lower branches and kind of think of what you're trying to do. Say if you have switchgrass on the outside of a woodlot where you're trying to create bedding within, you want that switchgrass there because you're creating that low side cover. The side cover is the most important. These deer in here aren't hiding from planes, from planes and birds. They're hiding from each other. They're hiding from you. They're hiding from cars going by. They're hiding from predators. So you need that side cover and that screening wall to do so, whether it's a hinge cut line or switchgrass itself. So think about that when you're screening. Think about the, uh, the options of screening. You don't want to make it so thick that it creates a bedding area along your border. But once you get that 20 foot wide screening wall in place, whether it's short, midterm, or long range, then you can not only screen your food plots, but you can screen everything on your property. And for that, you lower the risk level on your property as the deer view at the stress level. You can create more wildlife cover. You can create more edge, which equals a lot more wildlife, including white-tailed deer. So think about using screening in every, every facet of your white-tail habitat management using screening to screen bedding areas, travel corridors, whatever it might be. And of course, hunter access and then deer from each other. You can lower the stress level on your property and using those short, midterm and long range solutions are a great way to screen your entire property. Now, last but not least, a really easy way, expensive way is to create a berm. I've had several clients that have created berms along their property. I've even had one that created three sides of a 40 acre ag field that they converted to deer habitat and actually built a, a blind right into the berm. So I've had clients use berms. Berms are an excellent, very quick way to screen deer from a road, from houses, from your access onto your land. I actually created a berm in 95 outside my truck camper. I had a local excavator come over, created about a 10 foot berm. We actually planted shrubs on it so that I could actually get in and out of my truck camper, which is my camp for the weekend when I was hunting down the Thumb area of Michigan. And, uh, and that was one way to get in and out of that camper without spooking deer that were across the valley, the river valley, and on the other side on the 37 acre parcel that I hunted. So think about screening, it's a very important concept. It's not just for food plots. It's for everything on your property, everything that's deer related. And I think your deer will be a lot happier for it. And that's one way to create a great deer sanctuary on your land.